Welcome to GameSolve, short we rant and debate about video games. I'm Will. I'm Will. And I'm Ralph, the one that plays fighting games. And today is going to be a debate about whether or not tier lists matter as much as people think. All so right. first off, I like to say that tier lists create tier babies. You know, people that base everything on tiers and characters rather than player skill. This leads to people becoming rather ignorant onto how much player skill overrides where someone thinks a character is on a list. Although, there are lots, and I mean lots of tier babies, they do serve a good guideline on how matchups will look like when selecting your character. Well, yeah, but a tier list really won't help with matchups unless you main Hugo in Ultra Street Fighter 4. I mean, clapping those fireballs can get a bit tedious. Now, you wouldn't have to clap those balls if you look at a tier list and see that Hugo is like Z tier. You don't have to be a tier bait to have enough respect for yourself to not choose one of the worst characters in the game. Well, you see, that's the thing. Hugo may be the worst character in the game, but in a lot of today's fighting games, there's not really that big of a gap in tiers. I mean, just look at the Capcom Pro Tour top 16s. You have, uh, you know, high tier characters and low tier characters up there. Sure you do. Okay, but then let's take a look at some older games. What about them? I mean, even then there still wasn't a super big gap. I mean, the, the gap was bigger, and if there was a super OP character, he'd be banned from tournaments anyway. Well, even if there's a small difference, the difference is still there. It's not like the difference just goes away. It's still gonna make a difference, and tier lists help you determine that. Dude, you see, that's the thing. If that small difference really did matter that much, then you see, like, everyone being the same one character. Exactly. You do see that. Look at Melee. All you see is Fox, Falco, Marsh, Sheik, sometimes Pikachu, and maybe even Dr. Mario. You don't see that much variety. Well, you see, that's just Melee. Look at other fighting games like Ultra Street Fighter 4, Tekken Tag 2, and Skullgirls. There you have uh, top players using high tier characters as well as low tier characters. I mean, look at Alex Valle. Dude mains Hugo, who is a low tier character by the way, and wrecked like one of the top worst Evil Ryu players. Worst character in the game. Yeah, the worst character in the game. And he, and he wrecked like one of the top Evil Ryu players. That should be enough proof. Well, you know, you, you really got a point there. I think... I think we kind of come to an agreement here. I think tiers aren't as important as people think they are. Some people think they are, though. Yeah. But they really do help you with matchups and can be really important. I think as long as they're used in moderation and not taken too seriously. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. Because, I mean, some people, they could come up, they start to think, like, you know, there's a formula to playing the game. All it takes is, you know... <laughs> someone who knows what they're doing with a low tier character to just come in and wreck your little formula that you have and you know that'll just show you so, so like basically skill is what matters above all even though tier lists will help they won't make you win the game so that's the end of game salt for this week hope you enjoyed and uh, watch watch our next episode i guess and the previous ones and just keep watching and i'm just going to keep talking keep wa watch it all just do it there's like two episodes. You can, you can do it if you put your mind to or it. Or one, I don't know.